So for the first three years of my life, I was living in Zimbabwe. For the first few years here, I couldn't speak a word of English and I had to still go to school and not know English as well. Throughout my life, um, I've grown up with three brothers and I was the only girl. And um, a lot of people would say, oh, so you must have been the spoiled one. But I think my brothers were the spoiled ones and I was kind of like, the like housemaid of the house type of thing. Growing up childhood wise, I think the way I saw it was I was like the spare kid, you know, the person that would clean up the house after everyone, um, kind of look after my younger brothers as well. So I didn't really have much of a childhood. The arguments became worse after 2015. So it was kind of like I was walking on at eggshells every day, basically. So then um, I had my daughter in, in, um, in, in July last year. There was more arguments which, um, w uh, which had caused me to be homeless. There was like a phone number to call if you are in the risk of being homeless. They had an availability for that same day for me. So I kind of just packed my bags and then, uh, and then I got dropped off to Frank Walsh house. I think it was just that realization to myself that this was a big move for myself. At that point when Barbara was signing me up, it felt like a dream. It felt like it wasn't actually uh, uh, happening. So then uh, when Barbara had finished up with the sign up, I realised that not only have I got a nice place to move to, but she was there also to support me through it as well. I kind of think now, um, as a 22 year old with my daughter now, it kind of pushes me to look to the future and kind of tell myself that I deserve a lot more. I kind of want to say um, a thank you for just uh, simply smiling at me. Um, it's just something as small as smiling, you know, it puts me in a better mood. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to heal from my family and past problems. So just being able to be in an environment where, you know, they're very welcoming, and they always have, you know, kind of a, kind of like a happy face. I think it's just the small things like that, which has been quite uh, helpful with the move here and settling in as well. So, um, so I'd say thank you. I lived in Vincent Wells for 50 years. My dad had just died and my mum had to get out of the place. You couldn't live in the place you were living, so. The, the guy offered us a flat and she just said yeah and that was it. I moved in Vincent Wiles with Derek in 1997 before we got married. Yeah, I she... met him in the Caledon pub. Apparently one night when I came back from Ascot one night a bit tiddly. I sat on his lap and... Well, I, don't, I think uh, you did. Probably yeah. did, yeah. His older sister was up there as well one night and we were sitting there and I said, oh, he looks nice. And she says, why do you want me to introduce you? She says, it's my brother. And that's how we just started, I think. I can't remember, it was that long ago. I didn't know that. Ah. Got my yeah. sister to blame then. Yeah, you got your Barbara to blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> when I first lived in Vincent Wilds, it was a brand new block of apartments, flats, whatever. And it was lovely. I always intended to eventually leave and get a place of my own, but I just stayed in the flats. I personally, it affected my health, I was getting stressed out. My wife used to go out on her own sometimes at night time, I used to be a bit nervous and she, I used to make sure she used to ring me up and say I think it was okay. When Mike offered her this place, oh, just could not believe it. it, it it's just paradise for, for us. We went from, well we went from misery to happiness, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. As soon as we set eyes on it, at the location and everything, we said to each other, didn't we? Yeah. said, well, we'll have a look, quick look inside where we can, but as far as I'm concerned, this is it. 
We couldn't believe our luck, could we? No. We kept pinching ourselves. Yeah. So and it's quiet. so quiet. It took us a couple of weeks before we could get to sleep because it was so quiet. It was lovely. I'm stress free now. When I was in Vincent Wiles, I was stressed, wasn't I, Jackie? Yes, you were. Really stressed at times. And um, as soon as I moved here, it's gone. I'm stress free now. So that affects my health. Yeah. My health is much better in that way, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you thank very, you much, very much indeed. And especially to Mike. He's to Mike. been wonderful. He's been very good. He's become us. a personal friend, yeah. hasn't he? That's how good he's been. He, yeah, he's he really has good. gone out of his way yeah. to make Maybe sure we, we've we, got a dwelling right. that we, was suitable for us. And yeah. it really is. It is. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Born in Birmingham, um, in my mid-twenties, about 25, I moved out to Worcestershire, uh, met my wife, brought up a family. At that stage in my life, everything seemed settled and balanced and bringing up a family. We decided to, to break and to split. And then I had certain circumstances within my life where it was like a pack of cards, one started to fail after the other. It just become, it become a very dark place. Unfortunately, um, driving around the country, and I did, and I, I don't mind admitting it, I made the mistake of the, the morning after, and, and I got penalised for drink driving, uh, which was, was my fault. You lose your job with that, you lose contact through that. I had two weeks to empty the Birmingham City Council property, which my mum was renting, um, to empty it and to hand the keys back, and that day, I put them through the letterbox of the council. I realised I was homeless. I went to the police to see if they could help and I sat on a bench and I just thought this is it you've just hit rock bottom you've hit lower than low and it was like being transported into a parallel universe and I was just trying to work out how to get help and support the outcome was that that evening I rang an ambulance I was freezing cold I felt vulnerable and they took me to an hostel in Birmingham and I felt alone scared not safe at all and not secure Luckily for me, um, as a priority, they put me on the housing register and thankfully this was the first place that I bid on and I knew that if I could get back to Worcestershire and get a quiet base where I can build back off, then I can make life my own again or at least try to. And th that was more or less the start of coming out of that very dark place. I, I seen the windows and the doors open in my life. Um, I came over and met Judy we spoke but what reassured me was is that she wanted to know about me so I've been at the property at Chelton Court for roughly six months now it's made such a difference a genuine one because I knew I needed a base to put all those jigsaw pieces together and that as soon as I met Judy I didn't I didn't just have the support of the accommodation I had the support of Citizen and the network I had job advice from Gary from Citizen and um, I had uh, advice on rent, um, universal credit and rent, rent payments. I'd never done it before, so I'd had mortgages, so everything was new to me. All of a sudden, that support network was just flooding in at me, and it was such a relief. And from that support, uh, and from that people just caring and recognising me, I got my motivation back, I got my sense of belonging back, and my identity back. For once, I felt home. If, probably for most of my life, I felt independent, in control, and I got home and I'm supported. I'm trying to m make repairs to my family. Sometimes it's not difficult, but you know, the stronger I get, the, and the better off I am, the better chance I've got. I'm still trying to keep in touch with my boys the best I can. And it's stepping stones, because you fall so quick, but to come back up is small stepping stones, because you're having to adjust again from from that scary place, from that, that dark place. And it really is incredibly tough for every, anybody that goes through it. So yes, thank you. Thank you to Citizen, thank you for the people here because you're giving me a chance and I love it. It's quiet, pleasant, and I'm really grateful to be here and thankful to Judy Citizen and the staff. And that, that's genuine. So I lived in Coventry my whole life. Um, I grew up in a pretty rough area. My mum had six kids and uh, we were all mixed race. There was a little bit of racism 
in the area. I was a young mum, <laughs> had my daughter at 15, so uh, it was a bit difficult. She's 21 now and I have a three-year-old. Back then you had to hide your bump because it was embarrassing, like you couldn't be pregnant because you were always classed as a naughty girl. I had my, always had my family there to help, which has been a, a blessing because you need someone. <laughs> On the day of the fire, I never felt so scared. It was the most scariest thing to have to rush back because I wasn't here to see. It was horrendous. Getting that phone call and then my dad lives in the same block of flats. Having to rush back here was the most scariest thing in the world. Your legs just went like jelly. Seeing the fire up there was horrendous. When I moved into Thomas King House, it was horrible. Over the years that I've lived here, it has improved. I've been working with Ainsley over the past few years to make things better. The only one thing you can do is make it the best you can. My son's three years old, so I don't want him growing up thinking that him watching things out here is a normal thing to be doing because it's not. Now, it doesn't seem to be happening. You're like, you don't get people outside. You get on the stairs every now and then, but it's not as bad, nowhere near as bad as what it used to be. Thank you um, for trying. Some people just take it as just a job, but the fact that you've got a friendly, smiley face and the massive support is, is more than what you can ask for. It's gonna be a work in progress. And it's gonna take time, but what's happened so far is amazing. I've been here for so long. This is better than what it has been. If you've got the right people around you, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I've got the best family in the world, so I can't complain. I was born in Coventry originally, um, and then when I was about five years old, my mum moved me to um, Western, Supermare. Unfortunately, when I left school, started getting into drink and drugs. I suppose it was in the last like five years, from the age of 30 up until like 35, that's when it started spiralling. It gets you, it takes you drugs and like drink and like it takes you away from stuff that maybe I wasn't dealing with or hadn't dealt with. I got evicted um, and then I was spent five years homeless. So it's, yeah, it's just been a bit of a mad, mad life. I did sleep rough on occasion, like um, a few times when I could, like, couldn't get a friend to stop with. You can't wash brushing your teeth, things that you take for granted, you just can't do when you're homeless. And then you're trying to find your next meal as well. It's, it makes you feel worthless and it makes you feel like you haven't got a future. So when I first moved down to Cov, I got with the job centre. They put me in touch with this uh, amazing homeless charity called uh, Crisis. Um, that helped me then get help with like my depression. Um, I'd given up drinking drugs by then. I didn't know it was this flat when I'd applied for it, but yeah, I got um, got accepted to come have a view in. Um, I walked in, looked at the view, and uh, took the flat. So <laughs> I didn't really look around the flat. It was quite funny. It was really surreal for like a month where I'm just I've got somewhere to live. It's it's mad. Um, and getting used to actually sleeping in a bed as well. My first mattress I had was, I ended up sleeping on the floor because it was too soft, didn't feel right. I've been here five years now and uh, just feels like a really good home. And yes, yeah, it's amazing, amazing opportunity for me. I ended up being a sports coach and uh, it was really by accident and really random. Just by Doing a sports leadership course, the person, the tutor of the sports leadership course, after I completed it and got my level one, he put me in touch with a youth organisation called Aptitude that he was working for. Through starting my youth work and doing that, I've qualified as a level three youth worker. I've really enjoyed like working for Aptitude um, and they've helped me through training, getting my level three it was enough to then progress to thinking about uni, which I applied for last year and was lucky enough to get an offer. So yeah, I started in September, I'm doing all right and looking forward to the future. 
a lot of the time I spent like regretting things that I'd done in my life. And luckily now I've like moved past that. I don't look back in the past and think, oh no, look what I've done. I'm looking towards the future. And it's probably the first time that I have got a future. But I think the big, big thing for me was just taking responsibility for my actions because I spent quite a lot of time, years, like really blaming everyone else. Never my fault that I was drinking, never my fault that I was doing drugs, always something else. And once I got past that and I took, I started thinking it is only me, um, enabled me to move forward with my life. Just like to say a big thank you to Citizen for giving me a home, an opportunity to get a home. It's been really good.